Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Warcry for the channel and although we're using two of the newer Warband releases, well newish, for the game we're taking a trip back to the catacombs and at least one of them definitely should not be in here but hey we're in the depths of the catacombs that means I might be pushing into lava or jumping over gaps or collapsing platforms all that good stuff that you don't really see if you're just doing an open environment so it's a fun playstyle to bring back every so often. Anyway, we'll go look at the two sides, which are the Rottmeyer Creed and the Gorger Mopak. So here are the Rottmeyer Creed. They are a long way from the swamp and they should definitely not be in this boiling catacomb. Broken into dagger hammer shield as always in terms of at the back there. Each will be getting joined by two of their basic grunts. But from top left on, we have the Wither Lord. We have a, what are they called, the bloated one with a raker claw. Then we have over here, we have two of the carrion catchers with impalers. And then we just have six of the basic mire folk outcasts with um, biowood weapon and shield. And as I say, dagger, hammer, shield, two of them joining each group. Simple as that. So we'll see how they do in the boiling hot temperatures of a lava filled cave. And here we have the Gorger Mopak, and there's only five miniatures, we saw them last time, they are ridiculously strong, but it is tough for them to get objectives done with so few bodies, and if they get ganged up on, they can die, although last time I don't think any of them did. So, in terms of dagger, hammer, shield, the cave howler is the dagger, the hammer is the boss, the claw back there, and the shield is the Gorger with the great club, and then the one without any club at all is joining the cave howler, and the one with just the one-handed club is joining the clawback. So the one with the great club will once again, I think, be on his lonesome in the shield. So because we're in the catacombs, we're going to be randomizing deployment and mission type from the catacombs book, which might mean it's a bit of a shorter game as well, because they used to mostly be three turn games as opposed to more recent four turn games. But we could always potentially play a fourth turn if it doesn't feel like a leader, uh, a winner rather, is decided at that point. So, here is the book, you'll have to take my word for it because there isn't really much room to stick it down, but I can show you afterwards. So first of all we'll do 1, 2, 3 is deployment type A, 4, 5, 6 is deployment type B, so that's a 6 on these dice, yep, so it's deployment type B, and it is 5 on that, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it is hold fast, which it looks like you don't even get your full troop on it, that's interesting, it's hammer and dagger, for the defenders and dagger and shield for the attackers huh okay well that's very strange fine so that means it is going to be a shorter game then and then victory card table again there's two there's six here six here so one two three is the left page okay and then on the left page it's a six First relics, place one treasure token at the centre of the battlefield, then starting with the player who won the priority roll, players place one treasure token each. Each treasure token placed anywhere in the battlefield more than nine inches away from others and three inches away from the battlefield edge. If a fighter carrying the treasure at the end of their activation, allocate d6 damage to them. The battle ends after five rounds, so it actually goes longer than usual. When the battle ends, the player who has the most fighters carrying treasure wins the battle. So you don't really want to pick them up early then because you take damage. Okay, and there is going to be some missing people on the table then. So, alright, we'll get both sides deployed and then be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And we're back and with both sides not fighting at full strength today it's going to be interesting especially because it's five rounds. So for the Rotmire Creed they're not getting their bloated one and two of their Meyer folk on the table because that was who was in there. Uh, they rolled for and picked being the attacker. So uh, they've lost that group whichever one it was. I think it was their shield. But the two carrying catchers with impalers and two of the mire fork are to the very top left they've entered the catacombs from that door up there top right of the table is where the wither lord and two more of the mire folk are as well so they've entered and in the very center of map more or less we have the clawback and the gorger with club and then just entering down here at the bottom of the table we have the cave heller and the other gorger they're not getting their Gorger with Great Club. So they're only losing one model, which isn't as bad. In terms of placements of the Cursed Relics, 
One has to be in the dead center of the map. There it is there. The other ones are placed. Uh, the one by the Rottmeyer Creed, I think, is visible. It is right here, and these corridors are five inches thick from the table edge, so there is actually enough room to place there. Unfortunately for the gorgers, these rooms are four and a half inches, so there's not enough room for it to be three away from the table edge and nine away from the center. So they've had to put it over there, which means it might get snatched if they're not fast enough over to it. And as a reminder about how catacombs work, if you end a movement action on a platform, these, I think, instantly fall on a 1. These, you roll a 1, it becomes weakened. You roll a 1 again, it collapses. And if you fall in the lava, you're just dead. There's unique triples you can do as well for uh, pushing someone into the pit, as long as there's not a wall adjacent. And you can also try and jump, but you take some damage from the lava burning you as you do if you want to jump across a gap. So I think that about covers it. We'll go show the dice now. And as we begin the game of potentially five turns, here's how the dice shook out at the initial roll. Rottmeyer Creed had double four, double three, two singles. They used their wild die to make a triple four. The Gorja Mopak had a double two, double six, and they used their wild die to make a double three, giving them just one single at the end. So Rottmeyer Creed are going first as we jump into battle round one. Both sides diminished in strength. Let's see how this plays out. So the game got started with one of the carrying catchers with Impalers activating, spending their double three it was, I think. Either way, it's on rush, so just plus one inch to their movement actions, moving them at five inches per one instead of four inches per movement action. Did that twice for a total of ten inches. Got them where you can see them down there. That's just to apply a little bit of pressure to the cursed relic that got placed by the Mopak down here. Uh, probably not a good idea to pick it up super early. I think that's partially also why they want this um, objective type to last five turns. It's to really punish you if you pick up a relic early. Because five turns of d6 damage at the end of your activation can certainly add up. Well, this is interesting. We have the potentiality here of the most funny, sad as well, start to any game ever. Because the Cave Howler has activated for the Gorger Mop Pack. Spent their double two on Rush to get six inches per movement action. And has done two of them to just go after that relic. And she got much closer than the carrying catcher. But she did end her activation wholly on the wooden walkway. Wooden walkways start weakened. So you still roll a d6. And if it's a one, it breaks. And she's dead if that happens. For the metal ones, of which there is two bridges... The first roll of a 1 just means it becomes weakened, so then a second subsequent roll of a 1 at some point would collapse it. So, yeah, potential to be really funny here. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Exact opposite. It was a 6. So that means the bridge somehow manages to hold the weight of this uh, lady, maybe? Either way. So she's not fallen into the lava yet. The boss of the Rottmeyer Creed, the Wither Lord, activated and just did two basic movement actions. Without any doubles to spend, there was no more rushing, so it was just four inches per action. And no attacks to do. If they had a double, he couldn't even do the poison dart thing they have, because that's six inches. And the closest ogre, gorger, I mean, that's going to be at least ten. So, yeah, nothing else he can do this round. There's going to be a lot of positioning for both sides, I think, in the first round, because they started pretty far apart. The clawback activated for the Gorger Maw Pack doing just a single action to move and you might as well call them trolls because he's now paying or forcing people to pay the troll toll to try and get over that bridge. With him blocking that side of it, they're either going to have to end the movement here and then jump or take him out, move him somehow. somehow. So yeah, he is just choosing to block that bridge and if the other one does that, that's going to be bad news for getting anywhere close to that central relic. The other carrying catcher followed suit, no rush for him though, so a total of two inches less across two movements. Got him just into slash through the doorway right here behind the other carrying catcher. Yep, the troll toll strat is real and I'm not even mad, that's pretty funny. The Gorger Morpak activated their Gorger with club and he did what the clawback did. He is blocking that bridge. You can't just scoot past him because if you get uh, if you end within one of him, you count as engaged. So, yeah, and his base is large enough that he is, like, there's not enough of an angle there. You would have to, 
well, you know, there's a wall there, so you couldn't even jump there. You do have to get on the bridge and then jump if you wanted to do that. Yeah, that's a viable strat. There's going to be a lot of moving the Mire folk now for the Rotmire Creed, uh, so particularly after this next activation for the Gorger Mob Pack, because they just have one model left. So we'll probably do all that as a one -er. But for now, one of them activated, double move four inches, and is just stuck in the doorway behind the carrying catcher there. So the last Gorger took advantage of the double three to also use Rush, but he opted not to take the chance of ending on the equivalent bridge. He would have got onto it just not quite as well, far along because he started slightly further back in the tunnel here, but either way, he's not taking the risk. Um, out of curiosity, just <laughs> idle curiosity, would he have died? No, he would not have. It was a five. So he would have been fine either way. He could have taken the chance, but he didn't. So now there's three Mire folk left to activate. We'll just, they're all moving. They won't be able to get an attack in from where they are. So we'll just come back with all those movements done and show you where they ended up. So at the top right of the table where two of the Mire folk moved, you can see one of them just behind the Wither Lord there. The other one is staring at the Cursed Relic, contemplating when to pick it up. So he's just going to camp there basically as long as he can and snab it when he can and then try and live to the end of the round. If we cut across to the far side of the table, there was one Mire folk left to go and he's just popped in back here, kind of causing a roadblock in this doorway here as they're all filtering in with the Cave Haller just waiting for a brawl on that troll toll bridge. And that takes us to the end of round one. So because it's only a matter of who has the most cursed relics in their possession by the end of the game, there is no victory points scored at all uh, at the end of the round, and it's at the end of activation that they take damage, not the end of round either. So there's a look at the board state more or less, with a big pile up on the left for the Mire uh, Lurk, uh, not the Mire Lurk, <laughs> wrong game, Rotmire Creed with the Mire Folk, causing a lot of a congestion and we're definitely going to start seeing some brawl, brawls next round but the Gorgon War Pack just kind of need to chill I think as long as they have the majority relics they can just hold choke points and that's going to be real hard to get around and at the top of turn two, here's how the dice shook out and the impossible has happened, I've never seen this happen before the Gorgon War Pack rolled a straight one, two, three, four, five, six. I've never seen, I don't think I've seen that happen in a game, let alone just specifically Warcry. But yeah, they, they rolled perfectly, I guess. That's amazing. The Rotmire Creed had a double six and a double three. They were not getting priority no matter what, basically. So they used their wild die to make a triple six. That might be relevant if they try and do a push action into the lava. Um, the Gorgon Mop Pack is turning that single six into a double six. But yeah, the one, two, three, four, five, that just makes them definitely have priority. Which they may not even have wanted, really because they're just mostly holding choke points, but okay, here we go. So round two got started with the Cave Howler, who after surviving not collapsing into the lava in turn one, simply moved in front of the Cursed Relic she was eyeing up and has opted not to pick it up. And it is optional. If you move within one inch of a pick upable treasure, you may pick it up. It is not, you must double check the wording of that. So yeah, she's positioned herself, herself such that the Rotmire Creed cannot squeak by because of the stone there and the lava pit here. So they have to go through her or, or you know, die to her. So I, I love that she's kind of like in the come at me pose, at least as seen from the back. So she, yeah, she doesn't need to pick up that relic right now. She just needs to hold them off. So first up for the Rotmire Creed was the closest carrying catcher who took up the challenge issued by the Cave Heller, immediately spending their double three, I believe it was, on Blowpipe, you pick a visible enemy within six inches, you roll two dice. On a four plus, you do damage equal to half the value of the die you use. So in this case, it would have been three, so half rounded up is two. And if you get a six, you also subtract one from the toughness of the person you hit until the end of the battle round, which doesn't really matter since Gorgon Wapak are low toughness. That's to make up for how many wounds they have. But either way, there was no four plus. So the Blowpipe did nothing. The Cave Howler just darted to the side, I guess. Or maybe it's too dark in there. So first actual action for um, the carrying catcher. Almost forgot the name there. Moved into battle and then swung three attacks at strength four versus toughness three. So just looking for threes. Two basic wounds got through for a total of four damage. The cave heller has a casual 30 wounds. So quite a few more to go. Down the other end of the table, the Gorger, who's just Gorger, doesn't have a club or anything, activated and did two movement actions. One movement action at five inches was enough to fully clear 
the pit so you don't check for the thing collapsing. I guess you, you consider that he just does it in a single bound. Then he moved up here, definitely applying some threat to the Wither Lord and his two underlings over here. And also kind of blocking partially. Well, no, he wouldn't be able to jump there. Yeah, they have to walk onto the bridge. Forgot about that. So, so a rock and a hard place decision for them up there. Well, the Wither Lord activated and there was an interesting decision to make because after doing a movement action to get into close combat with that Gorger, there was two tasty choices for that triple they had. The first was to do the Catacombs unique action push, which is trying to insta-kill someone by pushing them into the lava pit if they're within half an inch of it and you're within an inch of them. You roll one die each and add on your toughness and whoever rolls higher, or rather if you roll higher you kill them. They would have had a one die or one point advantage because the Lord is toughness four against toughness three. But the what sounded like the safer option was to spend a triple because it was a six, a triple six, on something that's unique to the Wither Lord called Lethal Injection. You roll dice equal to the value of the ability, six in this case, and for each die that equals or exceeds, how's it worded? Um, exceeds the value of the toughness of the person you're stabbing, you do five wounds. So for every four plus, essentially, because they're toughness three, it would have been five damage. And the roll that was made is right in front of you. And it's pretty bad. The crits do nothing with this lethal injection. There's a potential 30 wounds to come out of this if you're rolling six dice. Granted, six four pluses is not super likely, but likewise, getting only a single die out of six of them, that's a four plus, also is not super likely but that's what happened so there is five whole wounds oh just out of curiosity what would have happened on a push the push would have been successful and he would have been insta killed that is just you know that's the way it goes and after reeling from what could have been remembered that the wither lord of course has another action he attacked the gorger four attacks strength four versus toughness three so he's looking for three pluses on a 3 slash 5 damage weapon. Got one crit, two normal hits. Two normal hits add up to six. The crit is five, so that is 11. So that's 16 damage, you know, that's not bad. That's over half its health, but it could have been insta-dead if things had just gone a little different. And we're staying up here. The Gorger with Club activated, spent their double five or six on Rush for plus one inch per movement action. One got him safely across, but not quite within an inch of the Wither Lord. So instead of going after him, did a tiny second move to block the doorway so only one Mirefolk can technically attack him there. Uh, the other one is out of range I think so it's kind of holding them at bay if nothing else. The Mirefolk outcast now stuck in that doorway thanks to the Gorger with the club activated and just swung twice so across two attacks of three dice each at strength three versus toughness three he was looking for four pluses and their dice have come to play. They got three normal hits through and two crits the normal hits are 1 damage each, the crits are 4 wounds each, so that's 11. That is 11 wounds of the Gorger's 30. That is insane damage from a bog standard little guy, but the, the dice are, are in their favour. So that left the clawback for the Gorger mob pack and they have opted to activate and wait. That means they use up an action to keep another action in reserve. So if someone tries to cross the bridge and ends a movement action within one of them, they can then swing at them. He doesn't have ranged attacks or anything like that, so he's not going to be able to do much else. It's just to add a further detriment, or deterrent, sorry, that's the word, for anyone actually going that way. There's not much else he can do. So that means that there's a Mire Folk outcast on the top right that can't do anything because he can't get into combat at the doorway there, and he just wants to wait on the relic anyway, so he's probably not going to move at all. So over here is just the other carrion catcher and the two over here. So depending on what they end up doing, we might do it all at once. But I think the carrion catcher, no, he'd probably have to do, yeah, they only move four. So he's not going to get into combat. Yeah, we'll probably just have to move them. Yep, so we can just handle where everybody ended up. Carrion catcher had to double move to get into combat with the cave howler. One of the two Mirefolk outcasts did the same thing. So that's three of them engaged with the cave howler now. And then it's a bit of a funny standoff up here. The other Mirefolk outcast, as little as he may be, is just standing on the opposite side of the bridge, staring down the clawback, which is pretty funny. So that means if the clawback wants to get over there, he's going to be in much the same position as he was trying to create. But that does take us to the end of the second round and of a potential five. 
Again, there's no victory points or anything to cover, so I'm just trying to give you as far back a view of the table to see the board state as possible. And with that, we're just going to go straight to the dice rolls for round three of five. And here is the dice results at the top of turn three. The Rottmeyer Creed, double one, double four. They used the wild die to make a triple three, leaving them with two singles. The Gorger Mopak had a double three and that's it. They used their wild die to make a double six. They have three singles, so once again, they will be going first. So it was the Gorger that forgot to bring his club to work today that was activated out the bunch of them, fearing perhaps that he might go down or get pushed into the lava. So he just did two attacks into the Witherlord. So he is four attacks, strength four twice. That's the second roll right there. First roll, he managed to get two bog standard wounds through for a total of six damage, three each. Second attack was three successful attacks for nine. So that is 15 wounds on the Witherlord. So that's pretty good. It's about time to start doing damage. The Witherlord has 20 in total. So he has five wounds left. We'll consolidate those wounds down now as well between cuts. Well, this was not unexpected. The Witherlord activated and immediately spent their triple one on push into pit. It's a straight roll off. You roll a die each, add your toughness. In this case, it's uh, three on the Gorger and four on the Witherlord. And even if it was equal, yeah, he got him. Just shoulder checked him. Boom. He gave a thumbs up as he was dying as his tradition. But he is out of there. Which is real nasty. Especially because that doesn't count as an action. So the Weather Lord's actually going to do some actions now. I suspect he's going to go across the bridge. But we'll, he might actually help out his underlings over there. Let's see. Yeah, it seemed like the best option was for him to help out his underlings because he hasn't got many wounds left and he can certainly stand up to them damage-wise more so than the Meyer folk can. So first action, he moved into combat with the one with the club, swung at him, four attacks, strength four, and managed to hit him for six more wounds on top of the 11 he already had. So that's 17 of his 30 gone. So the Gorger with the club that just got stabbed in the back by the Witherlord activated and decided to stay focused on his main target which is just the little poor little Meyer folk right in front of him. Swung at them twice, first set of attacks which was 4 attack strength 4 versus toughness 4, did 2 normal wounds through for a total of 6 damage and his roll for his second attack is down here, have not bothered counting this up but that's 2 crits and 2 hits so that would be 10, that would be 16. They have 10 wounds so they're dead. They're, they're, they've been thrown into the back wall and just splatted into a fine paste. Uh, took both of his actions though because it was the second roll that was the good one, not the first. But he has removed a Marfolk. And right over the other end of the table, the carrying catcher here that initiated combat with the cave hiller is going first again. Uh, with a bunch that is currently harassing. And swung twice. That is three attacks, strength four versus toughness three. The, oh sorry, first of all started with Blowpipe, forgot, they spent double on the poisoned Blowpipe and managed to do three wounds this time, so not too shabby. Then he did his two sets of basic attacks. First set of attacks did a total of five damage, second did a total of two. So all said and done, that is 14 wounds gone of the 30 the Cave Heller has as well. Yeah, it's only the Clawback that has more than 30. And we're sticking over here because the Cave Howler is striking back. Forgot to mention, because it is relevant, that only the Clawback innately can pick up treasure for the Gorger Maw Pack because he doesn't have the Beast Rune mark. Everyone else, you have to spend a double on Glimmer of Consciousness and it only lasts for that round. So they're going to have to make sure they have doubles for the final round of the game for one. But that does mean they can't preemptively pick up any of the Cursed Relics slash treasure until then. Uh, unless it's the clawback. So totally forgot about that, but that's that's going to be rough. But the important part is they're coming out swinging. She attacked twice, first into just the Mirefolk outcast. She did 12 wounds. He got sent flying, battered off into this, and then just turned into mist. Then for her second set, oh, she also uh, rolls five attacks at strength four, not four attacks. Then she swung into the carrying catcher who hasn't activated yet and managed to do six wounds of his 12 just like that so she hit pretty well there and she doesn't have any fear of getting knocked into the pit currently because they don't have any dice left to spend and it's a triple she couldn't do that to them for the same reason they only have doubles left to spend well it's not just the Rottmeyer Creed dropping like flies all of a sudden the other carrying catcher who just finished getting smacked in the face by the cave howler activated swung twice so two sets of three attacks strength four versus toughness three 
So looking for threes. That is the combined double or both attacks. Four regular attacks got through and two crits, which means that is 18 wounds on top of the 14 already had, which unfortunately adds up to 32. So definitely more than 30. So the cave howler has been beheaded by that big old bone scythe they're wielding and is out of there so that that's uh that's pretty bad they're down to just the clawback and the pretty badly wounded gorger with club so i mean i guess it's technically still a draw score wise but every loss for the gorger mob pack hurts more so the clawback is activating for the mob pack and this is potentially risky they spent their double, not their double six, but what's the other double, double three, uh, or whatever it was, doesn't matter, on their unique, which is Bounding Leap. You can use it if there's a visible enemy fighter within six of you, you do a free move, and then you do an attack. So essentially it's just a way to close the distance without using up an action. So that means he can attack twice if need be. But it does mean he finishes wholly, oh wait, no, he can't die here. Even if it, even if it is a one, it just becomes weakened. So he has a chance, so... It is not weakened, it, everything is fine. He's now able to go roll his dice and see if he requires both actions to splat this gentleman. Because if he doesn't, he can then engage these two down here to stop them moving in on the relics. Uh, yeah, after one attack, yeah, that's pretty decisive. He gets four attacks per action at strength five. So he's looking for three pluses and he got one normal hit and three crits. The three crits equals 18 wounds, and then you add on another three. So yeah, that's 21 wounds against a 10 wound model. He, there's actually an open door here, so it's not even that he splatted against the wall, it's just he got punched so hard, like he's in the next state. He is going to take him a while to walk back if there's anything left of him. So that only took one action. The only thing he really can do with his other action though, like mentioned, is to tie up both the carrying catchers in combat here. He has five inches of movement to move. It's plenty. He doesn't want to be within half an inch of the edge, however, but he can just move in like that, and that means they'd have to do a disengage to get away from him, which at least means they can't run off with the relic too far if they decide to grab it in round four. So I didn't realise just how few bodies are left on the table now, because the Gorger Mopak did go on a pretty impressive killing spree there, even though they lost some of their own as well. So the last activation is the other Mirelurk, uh, Mire Folk outcast every time. Too much fallout who activated, opted to pick up the Cursed Relic there and retreat into the corner. In a position such that this is an open space, they would be able to attempt the jump action. I think they'd actually have to use a rush as well to get an extra inch, because they only move four, and he would take damage. It also means he's ending his activation with a Cursed Relic in his possession, so he's going to take d6 of damage. <laughs> it's six damage! That's not what you want to see if you're holding on to it for two more turns after this. We could have risked just leaving it there because that Gorger can't pick it up until he has Spark of Consciousness. But he wanted to try and pull it away from him. But that's pretty bad. So he's got four wounds left. That might have been a really big mistake. So at the end of round three, it has come down to a fight on both flanks. On this side, we have the Clawback fighting the two Carrying Catchers. One of the Carrying Catchers is wounded and the other two have no wounds at all. And then on the right flank, as we were just discussing, we've got a uh, Mirefolk outcast who's managed to wound himself by trying to handle a cursed relic he does not understand and has almost killed him instantly versus a pretty heavily wounded Gorger with club versus a uh, equally pretty wounded Witherlord. I think who gets first activation next round is going to decide the outcome of that particular fight, but I guess we'll see. Well, let's go to the dice. So, top of the penultimate round, unless we get a tabling, round four of five. The Rottmeyer Creed rolled a triple three, double four, and as a result of everything else, they opted to use their world die just to make a double five because they weren't going to get priority. Anyway, the Gorger Mop Pack had a double five, they've turned that into a triple, double two, and two singles, so they will be going first. So, of course, it was the Gorger with the club up here that activated, swinging into the Witherlord. I think he rolled the wrong dice last turn. I think it was four attacks at strength four, which is just the bog standard Gorger. The Gorger with the single club is three attacks at strength five. So he was only needing threes. He got two normal wounds through and a crit. That is a total of 12 wounds against a model that had five left. So one club to the side of the head off into the pit of lava 
and the Wither Lord is out of there. Now he does face a bit of an issue because the best he can do here, because he can't swing again, actually he could Bounding Leap, couldn't he? Ooh, can he see, like he was turned just to face the Wither Lord for dramatic effect for the shot, he is technically, you know, in the doorway. I wonder if a Bounding Leap would get him to the Relic. That called for some really, really careful measuring and it it seems like he was just out of six, so Bounding Leap would not have been an option. So instead he spent their double two on Rush, just to get an extra inch to make sure that he ended that movement action within an inch to lock that Mirefolk Outcast in combat, because that just means if he does a disengage he probably wouldn't have enough distance, even with a Rush of his own, to do a leap from here to here, because it's too far for his pathetic movement range. So that seemed like the best alternative option. Well, Brave Sir Robin ran away as one of the carrying catchers activated, did a disengage action, spent their double four on Rush, and then has nabbed the Relic and just scarpered. Just absolutely done a runner and is taking a single wound. Well, that's, that's not good for the Gorgers. The Clawback activated, swung into the other carrying catcher, uh, the dice had been moved, but I believe it was one crit and one hit for a total of nine additional wounds on top of the six he had. They actually only have 12, so he's been battered into the wall and the rocks there, just like pinball, and is dead. And unfortunately, he's just going to have to do a movement action. Can't even do a rush because he has a triple left and can't do anything useful with that. So the clawback is just going to end after his five inches. He's not touching the flimsy bridge. The carry catcher fully cleared it, so you didn't need to check for it collapsing. It does mean he can hound him on the, the last turn, but whether or not he actually is able to like one tap him, that remains to be seen. Oh, and there, there we go. There, so you can see how close he is. He has all the reasons in the world to run for his life. So all that left was the Mirefolk Outcast up here in the top. Uh, he isn't going to be able to make the jump, so he just decided to attack twice. For a total of six dice rolled. Oh, sorry, first of all, spent their double on Poison Blow Dart and did nothing. Both was under four. So anyway, that is just two bog standard hits for an extra two wounds. So this one can just be flipped to three. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 19 wounds of Asteri, so not in any danger of dying. What does matter, though, is does the Cursed Relic in his possession now kill him at the end of his activation? Two additional wounds. That's him up to eight, right? Because he got six turn one. He's got two wounds left. The Relic is killing him, and that is the end of the round already. At the end of the penultimate round, it's looking like it could be a draw as long as the a double is rolled in the dice step that's about to happen for the Gorger mob pack, and then if the Gorger with the Great Club kills that Mirefolk outcast, he can just pick up the objective using, uh, the treasure that is, using Glimmer of Consciousness, which removes his beast marker, uh, rune mark, for the round. Um, I don't think the Clawback will catch or kill the carrying catcher who's running. I guess he's running to the door here. He's just running as fast as he can. So if the game does end like that, it's going to be one relic each. Uh, I don't know if you can hold more than one. With Rush, would he make it to that? That's possible. That might be what you have to do to get a win. Uh, I guess we'll see. Let's go into the final round. Well, and here you have it. The Rottmeyer Creed did not want to use their wild die. They really wanted priority, and they don't want to turn a double into a triple because that double spent on Rush is more useful than a triple would be. You need a double for the blow dart as well. So they did roll a natural triple six, double one, single two, didn't spend their wild die. The Gorger Mob Pack, triple five, and then just three singles. They've turned one of those into a double to give them access to Bounding Leap or Rush, depending on the situation. But they are going first, so I think they've got to go with the Gorger with the club. But, oh, well, let's look at the board state. So, yep, we're up at the top end of the table. Done one action with the Gorger with the Great Club. Three attacks, strength five. He got two crits and a hit. That's That would have been enough to splat the Marl Folk Outcast regardless. Just bats him into the lava, probably ends up hitting the wall over here, honestly. Leaving behind his Cursed Relic, which he is opting to pick up because he's spending the double two on Glimmer of Consciousness. It's until the start of the next battle round, so that means that he's still able to hold on to it by the end of this round. This fighter is not considered to have the Beast Rune mark. If this fighter is carrying treasure at the start of the next battle round, he drops it then. There isn't another battle round, so it doesn't matter. What does matter, though, is I think if he rolls a six for this damage, does he die? 
14, he's at 19 wounds. No, even if this is a 6, he, he can't die. It's a 4, so it doesn't matter. He's holding his treasure. He has not died. No one can catch him. So that's definitely one relic treasure held by the Gorger Maw Pack. That might influence what the Rottmeyer Creed do now. Well, I think the Carrion Catcher has found a way to guarantee the draw because, well, first of all, you can only carry one treasure per model. So even if he had enough to get within an inch of there, doesn't matter. He can't pick it up. What does matter, though, is how he moved. He spent double, or a double, rather, on Rush. So he was moving five inches twice. And he wanted to make sure that he was positioned such that after a five-inch move by the clawback, he would not be visible, because he has to be visible for him to use Bounding Leap. Although, actually, no, Bounding Leap is a double, so it doesn't even matter. So, yeah, the clawback will be able to catch him, probably, in two five-inch moves. Can't hit him, though which means he's going to be alive at the end of the game. He's going to trot along roughly there, and then roughly get through the door, but he's actually too big to get through, but let's ignore that, and end up there at the end of the game, and he can't attack him. So that does mean, I think, that we're going to have to end the game with one Cursed Relic aside, meaning it's a draw, although who lost worse? All of the Meyer, Meyer, uh, Rottmeyer Creed are dead except him. He is just grabbing that relic and running back to his swamp. The Gorgers, I mean, they've basically lost their entire pack, except the two of them, and one of them's heavily wounded. So honestly, even if you look at it from a, who has the biggest losses, it's kind of even as well. The Rottmeyer Creed was a 1,000 points on the dot. The Gorger Mob Pack's 995. So even if you looked at it at points, it still probably works out about even. That's pretty incredible. Well, when in doubt, loot. The two surviving Gorgers are just going to sit and loot the tomb, while the one surviving Rottmeyer Creed member gets out with a Cursed Relic. Why not? The head cannon is decided. Either way, no matter how you cut it, that was a draw. Pretty fun, actually. Uh, I'm rare five turn. Rare as well to not have all your warband deployed. If there were some special rules for catacombs that was completely forgotten, where if a deployment map doesn't have one of the Dagger Hammer Shield, you just bring them on as reserves at some point, and that's been forgotten. Whoops. But honestly, it, it changed the flow of the battle in a way that made it more interesting, I think. It looked like the Gorger Mob Pack was going to get wrecked early on, but then they had that turn where they just decimated, and it felt pretty back and forth, and yeah, I, I guess it was, because it ended with a draw. Thank you for watching either way. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you again in the future for more Warcry, but feel free to check out anything else on the channel in the meantime, obviously. Leaving a like, a comment, or subscribing certainly helps the channel in general. If you want to go above and beyond to support the channel though, becoming a channel member is the easiest way. It's pretty cheap, but you get access to certain video series like this one early, and some other little perks, icons next to your name, things like that, sometimes exclusive posts as well, including the backlog of them too. You can also check out the channel sponsor if you want to just pick up something for yourself, if you do so via my affiliate link. I get compensated, so we both get something out of you picking up Warcry or anything else. They basically hold every game I cover, so you can go take a look at that if you wish. Either way, I will see you in the future. Until then, ta-ta for now.